Welcome to another video on Pakistan warships. Today we are looking at the Yamuk class corvette, which is based off the design of a large patrol vessel, but it is intended to be armed with anti-shipping weapons to fill the role of a corvette in the event of a conflict. As always, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. In June 2017, Pakistan's Ministry of Defence Procurement signed a contract with the Dutch naval shipbuilder Damon Shipyard Group for the construction of two corvette-sized warships for the Pakistan Navy. The ships were constructed at a shipyard in Galati, Romania that belonged to the Dutch shipbuilder. Construction proceeded very smoothly with the two sister ships launched in May and September 2019, respectively. The ships completed their sea trials in short order and were commissioned into the Pakistan Navy in February and November of 2020. The cost of each corvette is estimated to be 75 to 90 million dollars, which includes the estimated cost of around 60 million dollars for the hull and 15 to 30 million dollars worth of equipment and weapons that the Pakistan Navy will install on the ships. The lead ship, the Yamuk, is named after the Battle of Yamuk in the 7th century, during which Islamic forces defeated an army of the Byzantine Empire. The second ship, the Tabak, is in fact a city in Saudi Arabia, and apparently this has um, significant historical meanings as well. Anyway, Pakistan has the option of buying two more Yamuk class corvettes from Damon Group, but the Navy is probably in the process of evaluating the performance of the ships it already has received before deciding on further purchases. The Yamuk class displaces 2,300 tons, with a length of 90 meters. This is fairly large for a corvette. The ship is powered by four Caterpillar 3516 diesel engines in the combined diesel and diesel propulsion. I don't know anything about this particular diesel engine per se, but a combined diesel and diesel configuration generally has a lower top speed, but has great fuel efficiency. This is reflected in a top speed of only 23 knots, which is on the low side, but it has a maximum range of 11,000 kilometers, which seems unbelievably good for a small warship. I think this might only be a theory range, I am not sure, but either way, this is large. In practice, the Yamuk class will probably use its high endurance to maintain a prolonged coastal patrol. The low top speed is not really a major disadvantage in my view, because the length of water, that is the coastline of Pakistan, that the ship has to cover is not very long. On a tactical level, speed is not too important for a modern warship, because an incoming missile does not care whether you're traveling at 23 knots or 30 knots. Total complement is 60 crew, which indicates a high degree of automation. The ship carries two rigid inflatable boats for landing or boarding operations, and there is a flight deck and a hangar to fit a helicopter the size of a Westland Sea King, which the Pakistan Navy has in service. In terms of equipment, we still don't really know what the class will have. Damon was only contracted to build the hull, and the Pakistan military will install the actual weapons on the ships, which they still haven't completed as of yet. For anti-surface warfare, we do know that the Pakistan Navy wants to put anti-ship missiles on there, and they will probably go on the midsection of the ship. Various sources say that it will either be the domestically developed Harbour anti-shipping missile, or the Chinese C-802A, which is the export version of the YJ-83. Both missiles are high subsonic and are probably comparable. If the Pakistan Navy choose to go with the harbour, it will probably be a 3x2 configuration for a total of 6 missiles. 
If it says the YJ83, it will almost certainly be a double quad configuration, or a total of 8 projectiles. The naval gun has not been installed as of yet. It was initially believed to be a 30mm rapid firing gun, but the latest information suggests that a 76mm gun is more likely, for example the Italian Otto Malara. There are several heavy machine guns installed on the ship, presumably automated, which can deal with asymmetric threats at close quarters. The self-defense equipment includes a single close-in weapon system towards the aft of the ship. It looks like a phalanx sea whiz, possibly taken from another warship, but I can't tell for sure. The scale model of the ship suggests that it will have flare decoy launchers as a countermeasure against heat-seeking missiles, and also shaft decoy launchers. The class is not believed to have surface-to-air missiles. So, the Yamuk is not designed to be an anti-air warship, and in the event of a conflict, it will require the support of area air defense platforms, such as the Type 54 AP frigates, the Barber-class corvettes, and combat air patrols. The primary air search radar has not been installed, and there are mixed reports of what it may be. Naval Library has suggested that it will be a pair of search radars, one in the S-band and the other radar in the X-band. However, media articles suggest that it is likely to be the, the Turkish Asosan Smart S Mark II radar, which is an active electronically scanned array with an instrumental range of 250 kilometers. We'll just have to wait and see. The ship is expected to be equipped with an electronic support measure to monitor enemy signals and will almost certainly include a radar warning receiver. The ship can carry a UAV in addition to the helicopter and they are likely to have at least a reconnaissance capability. In terms of anti-submarine capabilities, the Yamuk class has capacity for two mission modules for additional ASW equipment to be installed when required. Kind of similar to how the American littoral combat ship has the option to pick up ASW modules so as to change into an anti-submarine role when required. One of these modular containers is expected to have a side scan sonar used for underwater detection. Another mission module is expected to have, you guessed it, torpedo launchers that are the primary ASW weapons. Of course, the ship also has facilities to accommodate an ASW helicopter, such as a Westland Sea King or a Harbin Z9C, which can also be used to hunt down enemy submarines. The Yamuk class will be able to serve in a variety of utility roles during peacetime, because it is based off the design of a large offshore patrol vessel. The OPVs built by Damon Shipyards Group generally have the option for non-combat modules such as humanitarian and disaster relief and search and rescue operations. So there is good reason to believe that this is true for the Yamuk as well. The ship should be well suited to respond to maritime disasters and distress calls and rescue survivors. It will also be able to deliver supplies to disaster areas that need it quickly, and could also participate in non-combatant evacuation operations, because the Yamuk is actually quite large for an OPV, and it has good ocean-going capabilities. The ship can also undertake anti-piracy patrols, potentially as part of an international anti-piracy force, for example in the Gulf of Aden. The Pakistan Navy has classified the Yamuk as a corvette, so it is expected to contribute in some way to the combat power of the fleet in wartime. The Yamuk will probably play more of an auxiliary role in a conflict, for example in anti-submarine patrols using its ASW mission modules in coastal areas away from the front line. The anti-ship missiles slated to go on the Yamuk will no doubt be installed in wartime. They can be used 
to support the anti-shipping strikes of more powerful assets and increase the, the lethality of a saturation attack. That said, the Yamuk class corvette only has points defense weapons, and there arguably isn't too much of these, so the class will rely on the air defense umbrella of larger surface combatants, such as the Type 54 AP frigates, the Barbara class corvette, or combat air patrol. That is all from me on the Yamuk class corvette, or large offshore patrol vessel. This is quite a flexible and useful ship, I believe. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up and see you next time.